Hello everyone, it's me, John Lorden, and I'm back with another edition of Brain Scratch. Now we're going to turn a little bit serious for this one. Um, I think we're all pretty aware that we've had a lot of instances, especially in the press lately, of um, police brutality, um, accidental killings that are happening um, with our law enforcement, and most recently there was even a case where a 57-year-old uh, Indian man was walking down the street and couldn't speak English and the law uh, enforcement officers took him down breaking his back and paralyzing him. There are a lot of horrible stories um, even swatting. I, I didn't want to go into that too much on this video but um, you know this new act of pranking people by calling in a SWAT threat and then the SWAT team going into people's homes and violating their rights because they think there's a legitimate threat there. Um, and it really has a question that's been spinning around in my head for a while. Um, with all the advancements that we have in technology, why are guns still so dumb? That's the brain scratch for today. It has been almost 50 years since Star Trek premiered on television, and one of their early forward-thinking concepts was the phaser. And probably um, the best feature of the phaser was that it was a multi-purpose tool. There was this neat little switch where you could switch from stun to kill. And not only that, but um, I think they also had a lever on here for intensity, so you could pull that up and down but it was just a very simple, you knew if that dial was on this side, it was to stun. If it was over here, it was to kill. Now, here we are almost 50 years later, and we still don't have that technology. Um, you know, the communicators, we've got, I mean, your cell phone basically works like a Star Trek communicator. Yes, we don't have warp speed, and we're not able to beam people around, but I think the feature of stun to kill being built into a single one single gun is something we probably could have accomplished by now, and I just wanted to talk about that. So, now some people are probably saying, John, look, we do have non-lethal options. We have tasers, there's beanbag rounds, um, and I just wanted to talk a little bit about that. There are inherent flaws with those devices as well. First of all, tasers have been known to actually kill people, so um, we know that that's not a perfect option by any stretch of the imagination. Also, the harshest criticism against tasers is that it could give the person you're trying to subdue enough time to pull their weapon, and if you only have one shot, you want that shot to count. Um, now, luckily, there are newer tasers. There's a model called the X3, which actually allows for three rounds of tasing to be fired from it. Uh, most taser models before that were a one-shot try, and that was that. So uh, that argument definitely held a little more credence with the older models, but I think now that there's, you know, if you've got the person charging to you and you tase them once and they don't go down, you know you have two more shots in that device, at least you feel a little bit safer. I think it was more of a risk when you had that one shot fired, and particularly if people were wearing thick clothing, the older tasers um, didn't always work getting through the clothes. So um, I think you know, hopefully the X3 helps uh, minimize that a little bit. Also, tasers have a 35 foot range, which is arguable in terms of is that enough distance being covered to really affect proper law enforcement in all cases. We've seen some crazy things happen, especially here in California where you know um, bank robbers are using automated weapons and it looks a lot like a scene from a Grand Theft Auto game. So is 35 feet really enough to cover that? And I don't believe it always is. Um, even beanbag rounds, you know, beanbag rounds, rubber bullets, all of these items have been shown that even though they're made to be less than lethal or non-lethal, in certain instances they wind up killing people. And it just brings to memory the thought of um, the movie The Crow, where Brandon Lee was killed with a blank, essentially, because the paper wadding was too thick and it uh, didn't all burn off when the blank was fired and part of that wadding came out and tumbled right through him just like a bullet and killed a, a great star. So there are now 
there is now at least one new option that has come out and I wanted to talk about. This is actually being looked at by the Ferguson Police Department, who is a police department that's kind of wrapped up in these controversies. And it's called The Alternative fitting name. There's a picture of it right there. And essentially that whole orange piece clamps on to a regular firearm and you shoot a regular bullet and what happens is this ball here catches the bullet, takes all the force of it, and then goes flying off as a non-lethal projectile. Um, now the detractors of this uh, call it, someone called it the bozo bullet, I think just because of it kind of looks like a, a clown nose. Um, and this was actually created by a retired sheriff's officer who I think had a had kind of the right idea going. There needs to be some way to once again use the same device, use the same firearm, but alter it so that it is not in a kill mode, so that it is in more of a stun mode. Now there is downsides to this also. Um, first of all, it has to be clamped on, and in terms of training, um, when do you do that? Is it clamped on by default and it's just holstered that way and then you have to unclamp it when you think you're in a true lethal situation? Or do you fire that shot off as a warning shot and then just go right into real rounds after that? You know, it's, it's definitely not a perfect solution, but I think it's got some of the right ideas uh, going for it. Also, it's single shot. So let's say that you were in a crowd control issue and you had multiple people that needed to be subdued. Yes, maybe you could shoot one person with that and get them out of the way, but now you're back to your lethal bullets and I don't think you're going to take the time to pop that off, clamp on a new one, and then fire that off. So, uh, for me, I think the fix is, like I said, step in the right direction, but not quite there. However, the idea of it, of modifying the bullet, is a great idea. I think that um, the fix for this is either some type of new ammo cartridge. I originally thought of it as two. You know, the ammo cartridges that slide right into the handle. You could have, on the left side, lethal bullets. On the right side, non-lethal. And then some kind of mechanism that just switches between which ones go up into the chamber. Um, this... But this also raised a different thought for me. Outside of having that, which you know could have mechanical failure, um, you know, could there could be a jamming problem switching between the two different types of cartridges. Not to mention that two cartridges and the handle of the gun is going to make the handle wider and might not work as well. Um, something else kicked into my brain about possibly using a chemical reaction. So you have a slider on top of your gun, you know, stun, or we should say lethal and non-lethal. And if it's clicked onto non-lethal, as that bullet is fired and passes through the chamber, there is some type of chemical reaction that happens to the actual slug that changes its composition somehow. Um, I was almost thinking of, you know, like AB foam. I don't know if you know about AB foam, but there's two liquids, you pour them together and it kind of expands into this foam. Um, almost think of Demolition Man, like when they get into the car accident in the police cruiser and the whole cruiser fills with foam to protect them. Something along those lines, that when the slug is actually cruising through the barrel, this AB foam is added to it, essentially making this bozo bullet and then having it kick out the chamber uh, like that. Um, also, I was thinking of this slider on the phaser here and maybe lowering the amount of black powder that is used in that bullet being fired. Or once again, maybe an alternative chemical kicks in and is able to suppress as much of that black powder being fired so that it's fired at a much lower and slower velocity. I definitely think there's something to that thought of chemicals being used to either alter the slug, alter the black powder, possibly both. Or maybe the bullet construction should not be done already. Maybe that should actually happen in the weapon. Think back to the Civil War days. The black powder was thrown in, then your bullet was added on top of that, and you could decide if you were going to do a double charge of black powder, if you needed that to go travel much farther, or you could use a single charge of black powder or a half charge of black powder. 
there you actually had some control over the velocity of the projectile, where right now bullets are pretty dumb. They're made to do that one thing. They're made to fire at that specific velocity with those specific grains of black powder, and that is it. And once again, this just calls back to that initial feeling I have of why are guns and bullets so dumb? Think about your cell phone. Think about all the advancements in technology that's happened since then. Um, this makes me think of a show that I've recently fallen in love with on Netflix called Continuum. And in that show, the hero has a gun that is basically computer controlled. I mean, it identifies targets. And I do think someday we're going to see our, you know, this cell phone mentality gel into the firearm and hopefully make guns a lot smarter, maybe even to the point where they will do risk assessment and pick the slug, pick the velocity. Um, you know, it's, it's kind of a, a dream that uh, maybe someday that decision will be taken away from people that are actually in the threat of being out there. Look, I understand it's, this is a very hard job for our law enforcement, and obviously we're getting something wrong with what all the news stories that we're seeing and modern culture about this. Um, I think maybe we depend too much for their judgment in those fraction of a second situations that they have to figure out, and hopefully someday technology will help them with that, and they can just pull the trigger to know that they're safe and not have to worry about, is my... Is my gun set on stun or is it set on kill? Just knowing that my gun's thinking about keeping me safe and it's made the best decision and that's the one for this shot. I don't know. What do you think? I think um, hopefully this will drum up some great conversation. Maybe we'll help someone someday. Uh, please be sure to drop some comments below. I'll be sure to respond or fire up a vlog yourself and talk about this. Um, this issue is obviously not going away. It's become very heightened in the media lately. I love that at least one company is thinking of new alternatives. You got to throw Taser in there as well. There's a few companies trying to make alternatives for this problem, but it really seems like the technology is taking the slow boat to the gun show, and I do think that has to change. I hope you're having a great day. Stay safe and be well, and I'll catch you on the next Brain Scratch.